looks more like it. What's up? What's happening? What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Animation Station. You're more excited to Randy and everything animation. Welcome back to DCLI. Welcome to probably what would have been the most requested movie of this entire marathon to review if the online buzz is anything to go by. Batman Under the Red Hood. This is a movie I surprisingly, despite being a massive Batman fanatic, have never seen before. This was a first time watch. After hearing all the praise thrown at it from multiple, multiple people over the years. Many people hailing it as one of the greatest Batman movies ever made. Yeah, it earns that title. It's not my favorite, absolutely not, but it is a fantastic Batman movie and easily the best one of the actual animated DC Universe films so far. Yes, it's not better than Mask of the Phantasm. Like... That, that's a very high bar. I don't think any movie in this entire marathon, aside from maybe Dark Knight Returns Part 1 and 2, is going to surpass. But instead, it's still a phenomenal, excellent Batman movie that we need to discuss. Unfortunately, like I said, I'm still playing catch-up, so I can't really go as in-depth as I want to. But this movie is fantastic, absolutely. If you're a fan of Batman, you're a fan of this comic book storyline... This is a more than worthy adaptation. Like, the opening is great, the voice acting is fantastic, the writing is sharp, the tone is consistently dark, there are some nice bits of blood and brutality, lots of swearing, a lot of really adult, mature themes of redemption and, well, regret, arguably. And I think what makes this Batman movie so great is Batman himself, as he has to deal with his greatest failure. The death of Jason Todd. The death of a Robin that he himself brought into the fold, that he himself could not save. And you see how that guilt affects him throughout the movie, not to mention the rise of this mysterious Red Hood who is a... B-A-A-F-M-F-er. I'm not going to say the actual words because this is technically still a kid's channel. Who wants to clear the streets of Gotham in his own twisted way. And the way we find out about his origin is great. All the characters here are great. It's just a great, phenomenal Batman film. Like, it is so great. I have so much praise to sing about this movie, and I'm pretty sure it's been already been said by every single person in the known universe, but it, it, it may be years too late, but I'm doing it now. This is a fantastic Batman movie that's just as amazing as you've heard, and it's one you absolutely need to watch if you haven't already. If you're like me and just haven't had the time, or you just weren't really sure how it would turn out as a movie. It turned out amazing as a movie, I'll put it that way. But it is a very dark, gritty, adult, tragic movie. So make sure you know that before you go in. It's a pretty hard PG-13. And while I am still surprised it's not R, because seriously, so much swearing, so much blood, I was surprised it wasn't R. It's still incredibly effective as a Batman movie. The violent scenes are very violent without having to show too much of it. And it's just, it's such a hard one to try and explain because I don't want to go into spoilers and I don't want to spoil the big twist, even though this is a movie from what, 2011? So you guys probably all know the twist by now. For those of you that don't, I'm not going to spoil it. All you need to know about Under the Red Hood is that it's a fantastic movie. So before I give you my final verdict, let's go over this voice cast. Oh my goodness, this cast is pretty stacked. First we have Bruce Greenwood as the voice of Batman. He's no Kevin Conroy, absolutely not, but he still does a great job portraying this more regretful, slightly rageful Batman. Like, he did such a great job. Then we have Jensen Ackles, yes, the current voice of the animated Batman this time playing Red Hood in his first ever DC Universe movie appearance. And he is fantastic as Red Hood. I mean, yeah, you can kind of tell it's him because of the voice, but he does an amazing job. He is intimidating, he's scary, he is 
very BAAF, and he is just, he nails this role. It's Jensen Ackles playing the anti-hero. Pretty much nothing more needs to be said. He does an amazing job, and he definitely earned his chance of being Batman. Which sadly we won't be able to talk about because, again, we only have 17 days of this month. But trust me, when we get to it, it's going to be amazing. I'm going to praise him a lot for his performance of Batman. John DiMaggio's Joker is excellent. At first, I wasn't really into him because the voice is so drastically different from the Joker we're used to. But it's still a really good Joker voice, and it grew on me the more I watched the movie. Not to mention the sick, twisted extremes he goes to throughout the movie definitely make him a standout Joker. Like, fantastic job. Neil Patrick Harris returns again in another DCU appearance, this time as Nightwing, and he's pretty good. He's actually pretty funny in a few parts, but he's very much a background character and doesn't do a whole ton. But he does really good with what he's given. Jason Isaacs is a great Ra's al Ghul. Yes, I'm saying Ra's, not Raish, because Ra's is how I know it. He does a great job as Ra's al Ghul. It's a bit underplayed, yes, but... It works, and the way it ties into the story later in the actual reveal of the identity of said Red Hood is masterful storytelling. Then there's Wade Williams' Black Mask. He's okay. He's definitely a bit over the top for my taste, but he does a great job with this role, and yeah, he does a good job. Then we have Carlos Alas Alasraqui. I sorry, I still can't pronounce that. Um Again, back again as Chi Chi, he's pretty good. Robert Clotworthy as Leon's pretty good. Gary Cole as Bobo's pretty good. Brian George is good. Kelly Hugh, Kelly who, Hugh, Hugh, however you pronounce that, is pretty good. Phil Lamar is pretty good. I mean, it's Phil Lamar. He's a voice acting legend. Alexander Martella is good. Vincent Martella is good. Jim Piddock as Alfred's really good. Kevin Michael Richardson's Tyler is pretty good. Andrea Romano, Dwight Schultz, Fred. Tuscare, Kerry Tumbazan, Tumbazian, Bruce Tim, and Michael Bellini. They all do an amazing job, even if they're given the smallest of roles. Like none of them none of them stand out as bland or paycheck performance, you know, those bland generic performances that show that they have no investment. And it's not the horrendous, awful voice direction from Crisis on Two Earths, so it's a lot better. Like, it, it, this movie's so much better than that movie, it's not even comparable. And then the settings are great, the music's fantastic, the animation is, wow, amazing, fantastic animation. I really don't know how to properly, properly describe this movie to you. All I can say is that it's a dark, gritty Batman story that was a great comic book, and now it's turned into an excellent movie off of said comic book. It's dark, it's gritty, it's violent, it's intense. It's everything you'd want from a Batman movie like this. Just hats off to everyone. You guys did a phenomenal job with this one. Final verdict for Batman Under the Hood, Under the Red Hood. It's going to be yet another 9 out of 10. Why is it not 10? Because some of the writing can be pretty hit and miss. But that's really it. It's not... The writing's still mostly pretty good, but every now and then there's a moment that's a bit iffy like some lines that are said or the way that maybe it's delivered or the line that that character is supposed to say doesn't really quite fit that character just little moments like that i mean outside of that i mean the movie's barely over an hour it's absolutely worth your time and that hour and 12 minutes is going to fly by A fantastic movie if you haven't watched it yet what are you doing? Go watch it right now. It is absolutely worth seeing. But again, just be aware, it's a hard PG-13. Okay, that's going to do it for this review. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And this is where I would end with the catch-up reviews, but we still have one more. Today's actual plan review. And that review is the second Superman Batman film. I've heard it's even better than Public Enemies, so we'll see if it lives up to that expectation, or if it disappoints a little bit. We'll find out. 
Either way, thanks for watching. See you next time for Superman Batman Apocalypse.